Well, it's good to have everybody here today, amen? I hope that you're glad you're here. Well, it is time for our children's church. So in the kindergarten, first and second graders, they are standing in the back and they are waiting on you. They'll be taking you upstairs and you'll have a great time in children's church and looking forward to, uh, I know what you're going to be talking about learning today. So uh, parents, they'll be coming back down at the end of our service here uh, a little bit later on, amen? Wow, good group of them going back. Praise the Lord. I love seeing that. I love seeing that. Amen. Well, today we're going to begin, the the, continue on with the series of messages on connecting to serve in 2021. We've been talking about connecting to serve in the uh, vertical position between us and God. That's the most important connection we will ever have. And if we don't have that connection, as I've been sharing over the last month or two, that no other connection matters because it's just between us and God. Then we look today, we're going to be moving over uh, to the horizontal position between and connecting to the church. But before I get with my message, I want to share a couple things with you very quickly. Uh, the, the, I shared with you before that every time we have something to celebrate, we want to take some time to celebrate. And so today what I want to do is I want to give you a quick update on our loan balance. If you're a guest here, we have... Uh, Several years ago, we took out a loan uh, from the Baptist Foundation to build the, the new section of our building over there, and it was a little over $3 million is what, we, what it cost, but we had to borrow uh, uh, some money uh, to do that. And so the first balance that we had on January 20th of 2015 was $1,462,280.75. That's hard to even say, Amen. But that's what God led us to do. After, If you'll remember, if you were uh, a, a member here, we prayed and fasted for a month over what God would have us do. And so we felt led to take that loan out. And so we talked about how we were going to pay it back. And, and as I shared with you then, and I share with you again, is those big numbers sometimes are hard to, to digest. They're hard to figure out. They're hard to get our minds wrapped around. How are we going to do this? And so I, I brought to you with the committee, and we, we shared with you the, the plan was one square foot at a time. How are we going to do it? Well, we're going to do it like they said, what's the best way to eat, uh, eat a, an elephant? One bite at a time. So what we decided we were going to do is we were going to buy or pay off this loan one square foot at a time and not focus so much on the 1462000 because when you look at that, that's just like, Wow. But what we did is we brought it down to one square foot. How much would it cost to pay off a square foot? And it was like $73 a square foot. And so what we did was we, we went with that campaign. And if on your offering envelopes, you'll see that that's still there, the, the one square foot campaign. And that's what it is, to buy one square foot, to pay off one square foot of the building, cost $73 and something. So we did that, and then so what we did was in, in the next uh, segment on January 1st of 2018, we refinanced it for $1,242,000. So you see, we got rid of from a four to a two in that 100000 place value. And that's what we began to do is to look at counting down numbers. So what we did then after that on the January, on July 17th, 2018, we got rid of the two, got down to a one, so we had $1,198,000. So after that, we decided, well, we're going to keep going. And on June, uh, June 25th, 2019, we got rid of the one and got down to a zero. Our big goal, though, our big goal, you remember, if you were here, our big goal was to get rid of that million place value. Amen? We wanted to get rid of the one. And so what we got to be able to do is to celebrate. And uh, on J- May 4th, 2020, we got rid under a million dollars. Amen? $999,000. That still sounds tough. So now what we've decided to do is we're now going to focus on the 100,000 place value again. So what I would like to encourage you to do and, and celebrate this fact is uh, this day today, we've gotten from a 9 to an 8. $895,000. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. And what I did was I shared in the first service, you know, if 895 people to give $1,000 a piece, boom, we're done. Amen. But you know, that's probably not going to happen, but God could bring it. But what I want to do is I want to encourage you to help us take care of this debt and buy one and pay off one square foot at a time. We'll get it there. Amen. Look at the difference where we are from January 20th, 2015 to today. 
God has blessed us so well, and your faithfulness has made this possible. So we're praying and encouraging you to continue to give so that we can wipe that debt out. We want to get rid of the eight, get it down to a seven, then to a six, and a five. All the way down to zero, amen? And I believe God is going to do it. I just wanted to give you an update, let you see the difference of what God is making. And I tell you what, God has blessed us by building that section of the building to do things that we have never was, would be able to do today if we didn't have that building. So God is good and God is faithful, amen? So thank you for your faithfulness and your prayers toward that. And again, just one square foot at a time, we're going to get it there. Praise God. What I want to do, though, is I want to take, now get started with my message, Connecting to Church. A lot of people don't think this is an important thing, but my friends, listen to me. We're going to look today at God's command as he tells us that we are to be connected to the church. And uh, how we, after we connect to him, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 23. Hebrews 10, starting at verse 23. And then once you get there, if you're able to, would you please stand in honor of reading God's word this morning? And you at home, please join us as we read this verse as well. Starting at verse 23, Hebrews chapter 10. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for, listen to this, he who promised is faithful. Amen? He, God is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Put each other first. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given us, for the opportunity to come together. And Father, thank you for that great time of praise and worship and for the sweet spirit that's in this place. And God, I pray that that would continue uh, on as I, I now step up and to, and to share your word this morning. Father, I pray that you would open our minds and hearts to all that you have for us. For everyone here, everyone at home. And Father, I pray that you would just honor all the efforts that was put forth here today. And I pray that the words I'm about to say will not be my words but yours. I pray, God, that this is not my message but your message. And I pray the response would be as you desire for it to be from your people today. And Father, it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. So we're talking here today about a gathering or a group of people. And what the Bible uses here is there's different terms, but the, the Greek word that the Bible uses for this is the ecclesia. And the ecclesia is a group of people who have been called out of the world and into God. A group of people who have been called out. Called out from the world, said, come follow me. Just like Jesus would go to his apostles and go to other people and he'd say, hey, I want you to follow me. And the Bible says that they would give up everything they had and they would follow after him. So this is a group of people who have done that and who now are, are, are part of a, an amazing thing. And so we look and when we see, basically, it's the church. This ecclesia, this group of people who are called out is, is the church. Not necessarily this church. But all churches, all people who have received Jesus into their lives, they are part of the church. So when we look at the church in the New Testament, when the New Testament refers to the church, it refers to it in two different forms. The first form we're going to look at today is the universal church. The universal church is, again, as the definition, the collection of, or assembly of people from all times and places who belong to Christ's new covenant in this kingdom. So everyone from the age of Christ who followed him down to even us today and anyone who follows after us were part of what we would call then the universal church. That we're all in the same boat. We're all Christians. We're all believers. And so when we look in the New Testament, it talks about the ecclesia or the, the universal group of people. That's what he wants us to understand. And so when we look at this, we know then that the universal church is a group of chosen people and called out. Now, it's right here that a lot of people get confused with this idea of chosen. There's a, there's a lot of people who say this chosen is there's a certain group of people that God has 
foreordained and said, those are the ones who are going to be saved. And I've only got a select few, and the rest have no chance whatsoever. My friends, listen to me. That's not the word chosen, because you know who the chosen are to be saved? According to the scripture, the chosen is everybody. For it's God's will that what? All people be saved. So he did not die for just a select few who were chosen. He died for every individual. For God so loved the entire world that whosoever believes in him and whosoever is anybody, and we all have that chance, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So we are all chosen. Now, the second part is and called out. The called out are those who have actually received Jesus. That we stepped out from the world, from the worldly ideas, from all that stuff trapped up in the sins of the world, and we were called out by God. We heard the call, and we stepped out. That we received Jesus as our Savior. And so when we do that, then we are called out to not be like the world. So he talks about the universal church or those who are chosen and called out. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we're all called out, but not everyone will receive the call. Not everyone will heed the call. Not everyone will choose to follow Jesus. My friend, listen to me. The Bible tells us that the way, the, the way to destruction is broad and wide, and, and there's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to choose to neglect the call of Jesus. They're going to hear the call. They're going to, uh, they're going to experience the call. They're going to know beyond a doubt Jesus is calling them out from that darkness, but they will refuse to do it. He says, but you are called out from that dark place into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, and not having obtained mercy, but now having obtained mercy. So when we are called out and we receive Jesus into our lives, we receive light, we receive mercy from God, because that's what he called us out to do. So we are part, again, of the universal church. You notice that it talks about a people, not organized religion. He said, you and I are not an organized group. You are a people. So that we've got to understand is that we're not about an organized religion. I hear people all the time say, well, I just, I, I tried religion and I just don't like it. You know what? I agree with them. I don't like religion. Religion is destructive. I prefer a relationship more than a religion. I prefer a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And he says, so you are a people, not a religion. This universal church takes everyone who's ever received Jesus into their lives, and he brought them in to be a part of the universal church. And we become the part of the universal church When we receive Christ into our lives, not by any other means, not by by baptism that we receive Christ, not by the church membership that we become part of the universal church, it's when we receive Jesus into our hearts, there we are. We're a part of it. We are now part of those people. Listen to what God says in Ephesians 2, chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. But God, being rich in his mercy... Because of his great love, which he loved us with, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And listen to this part. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There's a section here that I want to focus on for just a second. And it says what he has done is he has taken everybody who has received Jesus, and he has raised us up, how? Together. And he has seated us, how? Together. Now here's what I want to prove on this. He did not say that I raised you up as a Baptist, I raised you up as a Methodist, I raised you up as this, I raised you up as this. He said, I raised you up as my people who were called together, and now I want you to be together. I want you, I raised you up all together. I I now want you to be seated together. 
And this is how, my friends, listen to me, this is how we're going to be uh, in heaven. We're going to be together. I want you to understand something. There's not going to be a Baptist section in heaven. And there's not going to be a Church of God section in heaven. There's not going to be this section in heaven, this section in heaven. He's going to put us all out together. Why? Because we're all part of the universal church. We have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So he says, I've raised you up together. And, I, and now if I have to, I'm going to make you sit together. He said, you may be separated on earth, but boy, you're going to be shocked when you sit together with someone else. Now listen, not of another religion, not, of, not, a, a, not under another belief, not under another authority other than Jesus. I've heard people that even would say that they, they, they think the Muslims and others are going to come because when Jesus said, there are those who are not of this flock that I will gather together, but they'll keep on saying that he says, I will gather together in my name. It's under the authority of Jesus. Those are the ones who are going to be raised up together. Those who reject Jesus will not be a part and are not and never will be a part of the universal church. We're not all God's people. But he says, I will cause you all who believe in me, who have received me, who have preached Christ and him crucified. I will raise you all up together, and I will sit you all together. Boy, how fun heaven's going to be, amen? It's going to be a ball, because we're going to be singing with a whole lot of people that we don't even know. But this is part of the universal church. This is part of the ecclesia. And can I tell you today, my friend, that Satan hates the church, and he will do anything and use anyone to destroy it, that anything that he can, come and bring disruption. He does not want the church to grow. He does not want the church to be added to. He does not want the church to be successful. And he will do whatever he can, and this is why he doesn't. Because when the universal church gets it right, man, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Just when even First Baptist West, if we'll get it right and we'll get it together, can you imagine what we're going to be able to accomplish? That's why Satan hates the church. That's why he makes it so difficult. So we not only look at the universal church, but I want to see also here we see about the local church. Now, the local church is a mutually affirming group. Now, I want you to look at this, a mutually affirming. That means we're all together affirming. That affirming is a pretty cool deal, amen? He said, we're all here to encourage each other. That's what it says here in the book of Hebrews, that you consider one another, that you encourage one another, that you stir up one another, that you affirm one another. But a group of people of a new covenant members of the kingdom of citizens identified by regularly gathering together. So that's what we do. We should be a mutually, we are in agreement. Affirming means that we're here to encourage and to help each other, to lift each other up. And we gather together under what we call regular gatherings. He says here in verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. So we have come together. That's what the local church is. That's what First Baptist is. We're, we're part of the ecclesia, but we're, we're, we're a local body. We're, we are mutually affirming each other here. And we do it through the preaching of the gospel and the celebrating the ordinances. And can I, I have, have you seen something here? It never says anything about a building. It's not a group of people meeting in a building. Because you know what that could be? That could be any group. Any group meets in a building. But we're talking about a group of people who are New Covenant believers. And we come together in agreement and affirming each other. And the idea of this, we do, the thing about this is, this is how people are going to know that we're in the Christ. We display, when we gather here today, we display or make visible the universal church. Because I want you to see something here. We can be a part of the universal church, but how are people going to know? 
as I shared today in the, in the first service, it's not like we all, once we receive Christ, we, we uh, get a, a, si- a signal to each other. We walk by each other and we go, that's how we know each other. Or we have a secret handshake. Don't tell anybody, but here's our secret handshake. Whatever it is, we, we don't have that. So if I'm part of the universal church, how's anybody going to know? They know because when we come in here, we are now making visible. We're letting everybody know, hey, guess what? Everybody in this room, everybody watching, when people know you're a part of this assembly, they're going to say, oh, they must be Christians. How? Well, because they're in what? Church. That's how we display what's invisible. Because they now see us gathering together. And that's why he says, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. And folks, I said in the first service, I still believe it, is that I'm concerned with something that I hear that is very common today in our day and time. Who a lot of people who say they're Christians say say this, I belong to the church, but I don't want to have anything to do with a church. I, I, I struggle with that. Because they say, well, I'm part of this big church, the invisible church, but I don't want anything to do with that physical church, that visible church. That would be to me like when when we look in the scripture, James chapter 2, verse 18, it says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. I want to be an appearance of an invisible church, but I want to make it visible. How's the way that we make it visible? Assembling ourselves together, mutually affirming one another. That's how it works. I want the the world to know that I'm a Christian. One of the greatest ways to do that is to be in part and involved in this local body. For not only we display or make visible the universal church, but the second thing is that we affirm and encourage one another. When we affirm, what it means is that we declare to one, we declare support for one another, that we have confidence in or give hope, and we even defend. In other words, that, that we look at each other and we declare, man, I'm on your side. I need you. And so what we do is we now come together, we're affirming each other, we're encouraging one another. Folks, listen to me. I love being with you. I actually, last week, my wife and I were in church with my brother, and and he was preaching, did a great job, great service. I loved it. But I tell you what, I missed y'all. Amen? I I miss miss seeing y'all. And I love when y'all walk into this building and I get to see you and I get to talk to you. That really encourages me and it affirms me. And I hope that when you walk in here, you get the same thing. You get encouraged and you get affirmed. That you get, you know that there's somebody on your side. As a matter of fact, I would have loved to have been able to see my brother and be in his church last Sunday, but have all y'all go with me. That would have been a great Sunday morning, Amen. To get to hear my brother, get to be with my family, but also get to be with my church family. Boy, I couldn't ask for better than that. So next time we go, we're going to give y'all about a week's notice, and we want you all to pack up and go with us. Amen? And we're all going to be in church together. My brother's going to hear this, and he's going to go, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, chairs, yeah, yeah. If you've ever saw the church, we couldn't fit, but we'd get in there, amen. Because again, the build, church is not the building. So when we do this, we see that we affirm and we declare support for each other. We talked about a while ago, or we sang in that song, that there's another one in the fire. But you know what I found out? That not only is there me in the fire, then there's Jesus in the fire, but praise God, I've got y'all in the fire with me. And you got me in the fire with you. Man, I remember just two years ago when I went, when I went through cancer, it was good to have y'all with me going through that. Amen. When my wife just went through it this last few months, it was good having y'all with, go through it with me and with her. 
Y'all did a great job encouraging us, and I hope that we'll do the same thing for you and we'll do the same thing for each other. Folks, listen, that's why the church is so important because we're going through a fire, amen? And we got Jesus, praise God, but we also, it really helps when you got some physical people around you too. I've said many times, I've heard some of you say it as well, I don't know how people go through some of the stuff they go through and not have a church. Wow. It's good to have people who will affirm and encourage each other. The Bible says in verse 25 right here, to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some, but listen, but exhorting one another and listen to this last part. And so much more as you see the day approaching. Can I tell you, according to the scripture, we're going to need each other more and more as time goes on. We're going to need each other. I don't believe that we've even seen a piece of the persecution that the church in America is going to start going through. Folks, we're going to have some difficult times ahead of us. But especially in those days that are approaching, we need each other. As a matter of fact, 2 Timothy 3.15 says this. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without uh, self-control, Brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Folks, I tell you what, those sound like some rascals to me. And he says, in the last days, this is what we're going to have to deal with. But I want you to understand something, that when he's talking about these folks, we know that they're out in the world. But he says, perilous times are going to come because what he's talking about here are those people who are in the organized church. How do you say? How do you, how do you know that, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because let's keep reading that verse. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Oh, they may be in church building, but they deny the very power of God. Because you know what makes the church so special? It's not that we're all gathered here this morning. It's not that you've tuned in with us this morning. What makes the church special is that power, power, wonder-working power given to us by the precious blood of the Lamb. That's the power. That's what makes the church special. That's what makes the church be able to do what the church does. That's what makes the church be able to be unified. It is the power of Jesus working through the church, through the Holy Spirit. He says, and these folks in those last days are going to have a form of godliness. So they're going to gather together in buildings, but they're not going to have any power because they're not proclaiming the name of Jesus. They're lifting themselves up, their own ideologies. Humanism, as we talk about on Sunday nights. It's my own thing. And it's by that the people, the Bible tells us, the people will begin in those last days looking for people who will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want the power. They want stuff that's going to be talked about that will be appeasing, verifying the sinful life they're living, making it okay to do it. And they will gather for themselves ministers, preachers, pastors who will come together and teach them what they want to hear that will tickle their ears, the Bible says, make them feel good about the sin in their life and that there's still hope with all of that and everybody will be happy. There will be a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. And then you know what he says with that? Listen to what he says. And from such people, turn away. You know what he means? Get out of there. Get away from that. The church should not be about what we want. The church should be about God. The church should be about Jesus. The church should be about his leadership through the Holy Spirit. The church should be powerful because of the Holy Spirit working through us. But when we want to make it about us, what we want, how we want, when we want, where we want, and everything that I like, and justifying what I'm doing, then my friends, we cease to be that body affirming one another. 
We become an organization that has no power. So what are we looking at here as I wrap this up? What are we looking at here? We're looking at the need and the calling of God on people's hearts this morning that may be looking for some other thing to justify who they are rather than calling upon the name of the Lord. You may be here today and you'll be saying, well, I've come to church, that's good enough. No, it's not. Well, I've been baptized, that's what it takes. No, it doesn't. I read the Bible every day, so I've got to be good. No, it's not. The question is, have you received Jesus into your life? Have you fallen down on your knees in your heart and said, God, I know that I'm lost. God, I know that I'm a sinner. And God, I know that there's no hope apart from you. And today, I want to ask you to forgive me of my sin. I claim Jesus as my Savior. He's the sacrifice, and I want to receive him into my life today. My friends, if you're doing anything other than receiving Jesus into your life, then can I tell you, you're missing out today. You're part of the universal church Only when you receive Jesus in your heart. That makes you a part. So I want want to share with you today. If you're here this morning and and you're you're saying to yourself, "I, I, I, I think I am. I hope I am. I've done certain things that make me think I am. No. Do you know of that time in your life that you received Jesus in your heart? Have you been born again? Not just here, but all you watching. Has there been that moment in your life that you received Jesus in your heart? We're not all born and developing into Christians, my friends. We become Christians when we receive Jesus. So do you know Christ today? If you don't, here, this is the time. This is is the moment this today is the day of salvation for you to become connected to the church but going back to the very first connecting to God through Jesus Christ maybe you're here today and you say well pastor I know I'm saved but this idea of the church just has not been real appealing to me because I I've tried this religious stuff and it's not working my friends religious stuff will not work It won't work. It will let you down. And if you're even depending on the church, if you're depending on me, if you're depending on your Sunday school teacher, if you're depending on, we're going to let you down. It's not that. It's are you trusting and connecting to God and this group of people affirming one another. That's what it's about. So that's what I want to encourage you today. That's the invitation. Today, right here, right now, would you receive Jesus as your Savior this morning? If you don't know him, Would you call upon his name right now? You say, man, I've been a part of the church forever. Doesn't matter. Do you know Jesus? Have you been born again? And maybe God's calling you to become part of the local church. To become part, tied in, connected, affirming one another. To to encourage each other to good works. Because you know difficult times are coming. Man, you may be going through a difficult time right now. As Patrick said earlier, he didn't know. I don't know what you're going through. But I want you to know you're not alone. You do not have to go through this alone. There is a group of people here in this church that love you and want to be with you, help you through it. But most important, you've got Jesus. You've got Jesus. We're going to step into our time of invitation. So I'd like everybody to bow your head, please, for just a moment. And as we step into this time, we're going to sing a song. We're going to do an old-fashioned invitation. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, man, I want you to call on his name this morning. I want you to receive him into your life right now. I want to pray with you. I want to help you. I want to encourage you, whatever I can do. But as I always say, you don't need me. You just need Jesus. Would you call on his name today? If you're sitting at home and watching this, I mean, you can call our church right now and someone will be on the phone to talk to you, to encourage you, to pray with you. Oh, how desperately we need Jesus. Would you call on him today? Maybe you just need to know someone who can be there for you. Man, we want to pray with you about whatever's going on in your life this morning. 
We want to pray with you. We want to help you. We want to come alongside you as the church to help you. Would you let us? You become part of the universal church when you receive Jesus. You become part of the local church when you choose. Would you choose today? Father, hear our prayer this morning as we step into this invitation time. If there's someone here, someone at home that needs you, would you speak to their heart clearly today, Lord? Let them know. And Father, let someone who may be going through a difficult time know they're not alone. Lord, they have a church that loves them, wants to help them, be encouraging to them. Come alongside them and go through the trials with them to give him hope and to defend. Lord, let that be today. Let someone know that right now. Father, if there needs to be a salvation, would they step out? Call upon your name, Lord. Hear the call and step out. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. And if God speaks to your heart, would you come this morning? The altars are open.